Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. You see, our church is like a body. It grows. It's growing and it's changing, but it's never left that original calling, that original mission that it had on its life. because I get joy by serving other people in Jesus' name. Well, happy 25th anniversary. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, I mean, it's been to be in the community for so long and to uh, have such, a, uh, such an impact in so many people's lives. It's, it's an awesome privilege. It's an honor to represent Christ we're not perfect, right? But what we try to do is, is be known for love, be known for kindness, be known for serving. That was my one quote that out of all the things I've said over 25 years, I, you know, and you know what? It's true. I do find joy in serving, and I hope that would be a mark of our church. But we're in a series where we're talking about building uh, better relationships, you know, building bridges. And, 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 and the, one of the things that will help us build a bridge more than probably anything else, is our words. Our words, we have a lot of power. Our words really carry death and life. We can crush somebody. We can, we can just cause them to shrivel up and die, cause a relationship to shrivel up and die by what we say. Uh, and so there's, uh, that's, a, that's a great honor as well as, as making sure that we do well with our words. Now, you know, we're all connected here. We're connected in different ways. I mean, I think that that uh, w sometimes we're not even aware of it, but all of a sudden we start realizing we're connected, you know, we're connected, especially in a church and a community. The challenge, though, is, is it's easy to get disconnected. It's easy to get disconnected. And so it takes effort, and our words play an important role. If, if you would, we're going to go through a couple verses, pull out your outline. If you're joining us online, I'm so glad that you're, you're, you're with us. Uh, we actually have the outline there as well uh, that you can uh, pull down. If you go to vineyardchurch.com, uh, the outline is, is, is there too. So uh, in Romans 12, verse 5 at the top of your outline, it says, Christ makes us one body and individuals who are connected to each other. So there it is. It says that we are connected. We're certainly connected in the church. One of the ways that we're connected the, the best is through small groups. Now today uh, is our launch of our summer small group semester. We're, it's only six weeks long. It's shorter. And we end it with a big serve opportunity. So I'm wearing uh, one of the, the shirts we wear. It's uh, called Serve Day. It'll conclude with that where we all join together on a Saturday morning for a few hours, and we just serve our community in different ways. So we're going to encourage you to be part of that. But this would be the day to sign up. Go out. Uh, we have our booths. Uh, they're setting it up now as I speak. So as you leave, you'll be able to talk to some of them. If you're not in a small group, that's a great time to be in a small group. Let me just see by a show of hands, have you ever been in a small group here at Vineyard Community Church? Let me see. Well, that's a lot, right? Okay, so you can see. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad you know the, the, the value of small groups. And certainly that's a big part of the Vineyard Community Church is our small group ministry and making sure that we, uh, that, that, that we help stay connected through that. Now, as I said, words can play a huge role, whether it's in a small group or at work or at home. And so we're going to talk about the three things that really erode relationships the, by the words we use more than anything else. And if, you, and if you really, like, get this down, it'll save you thousands of hours of counseling. So I'm going to save you a lot of money, a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of challenges there if just... If we just do this and we'll do it together. Number one, enemies of community. Number one enemy is selfishness. Selfish, that's not new, right? You knew that. You're going, hey, I, I don't have to come here to learn that. What's well, true, though? It's something we need to talk about. Just always keep in the forefront. Hey, selfishness is not going to be helpful. It's going to be hurtful. It causes arguments. It stirs up conflict. It's the th kinds of things that really uh, 
lead to like divorce and broken relationships of all kind. Uh, James uh, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, here's what he says. He says, what causes fights and quarrels? Don't they come from the desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. So it's selfishness. Now, this actually leads to wars and all kinds of conflicts, not just relational. I mean, I want something that you have. You want something that I have. And uh, that causes all kinds of problems. Now, selfishness is, is, is something we all struggle with, right? I mean, that's, that's nothing like, well, what's that? I mean, we all struggle with it. <clears throat> Babies, the very first words that they learn is mine, right? Is it me? I mean, we're born to be very uh, self-focused. And that's just something we struggle with throughout life. For most of it, it's natural. It's just part of being, you know, part of being human, I guess, right? It's just we struggle with that area. Sometimes people ask the question, how could God let evil exist in the world? And that actually is not a difficult question for me. I mean, the, 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 all evil comes out of is this, this, this area of selfishness, of being all about me, what I want. You have something I want, you know, and, and so I'm angry. And, I, this, and then we, of course, people go in different directions about it, you know, on how they how they how they respond, whether it's a dictator or just, you know, an angry husband or whatever. But, but it, that's really where the root of it is, is that it's all about me. I'm going to care for my own. I'm looking after myself. I'm interested in me, not you. The bigger question is, is why is there good? Why is there good? Because good is, is points to God. That's something bigger. See, we're naturally selfish. Darwin talked about that, just the survival of the fittest. You're just going to look out for yourself. At, 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 at best, and, and, and maybe act like some kind of animal at worst. But, but God, the God factor, God in us, causes good. We do, we're, we're not altruistic by nature, but God does something supernatural in us where we start to care about other people more than ourselves. And that doesn't make any sense. And, that, and, and so that's why Jesus talked in John 17. He said, hey, when you start to love like that, when you start to demonstrate a life of giving and selflessness, he goes, the world's going to notice. It'll be your greatest testimony as the church when you can live not all about yourself, and which, which really leads to uh, the, the antidote, which is selflessness. What is that? Where I'm not, it's not all about me. I'm thinking about other people. Philippians 2, 4 says, look out for Others' interests, not just your own. Easier said than done, but it's important. When we start to look out and we start to think, hey, I'm concerned about so-and-so. I'm concerned about them, not necessarily just me. Now, the greatest ways that God likes to teach us to be selflessness, to teach us that selflessness, is in our family and in our small groups. The reason is because they know us the best, right? We can't... We can't uh, we can't put on a mask, can't put on a face very easily. They know us. And so God teaches that to us in our families, in our, in our, in our small groups. And what I want to do, since it is the uh, launch of our summer small group semester, and I'm hoping that you will, as you go out, you'll at least talk to some of the people and say, hey, you know, you're not so weird. Maybe I will come to your, your small group, you know. I'll try it out. I'll check it out. But here's some things that, that can happen in a small group that demonstrate selflessness. Number one, this is you're, you're not selfish by showing up. When you show up, now it sounds pretty easy, right? Just showing up. Yeah. It's sometimes that's the hardest part, right? Just, hey, I'm, you know, I've worked all day and, uh, you know, everything in me just wants to just do nothing, you know, and, but I'm going, it's not about me. I'm going to go there for them. I'm going to go. So whether it's six in the morning, you know, when we meet our small, some small groups meet at six in the morning at the gym, some at three in the afternoon on Saturday, you know, Mount Trashmore, some of them at somebody's home at 6 p.m. You just, you go. And that's a, certainly a demonstration of being selfless. Another one is, is by accepting people in your group instead of just being a click, us four no more. You know, but, you know, accepting, you know, that's hard to do. I mean, we all... Like, yeah, 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 clicks are bad. But we like clicks because they're comfortable, right? We know people. You know, my little group, I know you. I, we kind of are connecting. I haven't maybe talked to you a little bit. It's hard to, oh, then there's a new person. You don't know anything about them. It's just like, oh, that's a lot of effort. I'd rather just ignore you. I want to just hang out with you and talk to the, see, so it's, but that's, what is that? That's being selfless. Selflessness is when you say, hey, I'm going to invite you into this group 
And, uh, and, and another one is just drawing people out, helping them to talk, asking questions, saying, hey, tell me about what you're going through. What's, you know, tell me a little more, more about yourself. Offering to help people, particularly with your gift mix and the way God's designed you, your abilities, and then being a host. When you're a host, you open up your home. That is an incredible act of selflessness. I mean, because, you know, I mean, people come in, they mess up your home, uh, they, 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 they try to eat your good snacks, and you try to, you know, so if you don't, if, instead of hiding your, the best snacks, you put them out, I mean, oh my goodness, now you're a host, and I mean, you're really growing in that area, right? <laughs> Galatians 6, 7 says, the person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others and ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. And so that describes some people's relationships. They look at it, it's just weeds. They're, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly not cultivated. It's certainly not the beautiful experience they, they, they want. Well, that, that takes selflessness if you want that. Uh, let's look at the second thing that destroys relationships. Prideful words tear down relationships. Pridefulness. When we, when we are prideful, uh, and we all struggle with that, right? Proverbs 13, 10 says pride leads to argument. He's talking about relationships. He says, you let prideful words go unabated. They're going to, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit uh, in a negative way, your relationships. A, a Catholic priest a couple years ago decided he was going to uh, categorize the sins people were telling him in the confessional by gender. So he made a list over a whole year and he then grouped them together and he found that most men struggle. Their big sin was lust. That probably doesn't shock you, right? Like, oh my goodness, you got to be kidding. Well, that's, that's true. So if that shocks you, wake up, you know. Most women, though, he said, struggled with pride. So, now, the Bible says we all, all of us struggle with pride. We may not be aware of that, but that certainly goes into all of our, uh, you know, the temptations we struggle with that, this issue of pridefulness. Now, pride can look, in, look like uh, different, you know, here's what it looks like. Uh, it, it comes out in criticism. When you're always criticizing, when you're critical of other people, you're judgmental of other people, you look down on them or you tend to look down on them. Those kinds of things, those are attitudes of pride, whether you say it or not. Now, certainly if you say it, those are words of pridefulness. You're picky and all that. Another thing is competitive. You know, in kind of a dysfunctional way, you're always comparing yourself to other people. You're comparing your husband to their husband. You're carrying your vacations. You're, carrying, you're comparing salaries. You're comparing uh, uh, job titles. And always, you know, this sparring, who's better, who's better. That's pridefulness. Another one would be stubbornness, unwillingness to say you're sorry. Un, you know, you kind of, your throat you just can't even form those words. You know, you're just... Uh, you're trying and you can't say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. That's really not a throat disability. That is a pride problem. Shallow relationships where you keep everything shallow, everything superficial. You don't want to go deep. So you use humor to keep things shallow when everything starts getting too serious. You don't want any, you know, people to really get to know you and you don't get to know them. Why? Uh, that's pridefulness. Pridefulness. And then another one would be, uh, like in a small group specifically, somebody shares his story, something that they are going through, and you know, and you got to top it. Every time somebody says something, you've got a story that tops theirs. Oh, you think you're complaining about that? And then you you come in with your story. That's just that's that's not helpful, and it certainly uh, just shows that it, there's pridefulness. Now, the, here's the problem: is that pridefulness is self. There's a self self deceiving part to it. It's self-deceptive. We can't see it in ourselves. It's so hard. We can look around and we go, dang, man, people struggle with that. I, all around me, I see it. You know, I, I, I certainly don't have that problem, but, you know, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. How can I help you? You know, I'm all in. It's like driving, right? Everybody drives either too slow or too fast, but us. We're kind of, we set, we're the right, you know, whatever we're driving, that's the right thing. That's how pride is. We're like, we don't see it in ourselves. So, that's, that can be a concern. So it takes this incredible amount of, of, of uh, soul searching, of, of realism to look at ourselves and let other people speak into our lives. Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride will destroy a person. A proud attitude leads to ruin. So how, how do you overcome that? Well, by 
by humility, letting people speak. Hey, you know, Andy, did you notice you, you know, you know, you're talking all about pride. Did you notice you might have that issue as well? By, by accepting that and saying, hey, I need to grow in that area. None of us are perfect, right? But we are growing. We are on a journey. Look at this verse. Five things he lists that build relationships. He says there in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, live in harmony, be sympathetic, love each other, have compassion, and be humble. So this is a good model for small groups, by the way, these five things. And, and it really builds all on humility. It all builds on humility. He says, live in harmony. Harmony is so important, right? We want to be harmonious, especially when you get a group together. You know, when you, as a group of people, God loves diversity. And so you're going to find people that are not like you. They don't have the same viewpoints. They don't have the same political viewpoints. They don't have the same temperament. I mean, they're just different. And that, there's beauty in that because God doesn't want everybody to be the same. You know, he's not looking for unison, but he is looking for unity. He's looking for where we come together and celebrate our differences. That's one of the things that makes a symphony so good. A symphony is, is all of these different instruments playing in harmony, right? They're playing in this. If, if the flutist gets up on his seat and starts playing as loud as he can or as loud as she can, you're going to go, well, hey, that doesn't sound good anymore, right? Sit down. I like the flute, but I like the flute. In, 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 in concert with everything else. And so this is, this is humility. Saying, hey, this shouldn't always have to be about me. I play a role in this. And that actually brings beauty to what God wants to accomplish. The only way we can have that kind of humility is, is by, by recognizing that God made us that way and embracing what God has for us through Christ Jesus. Now, number three, third thing we struggle in the back of your outline is insecure insecurity. Insecure words will hurt your relationships. Proverbs 29, 25 says, the fear of human opinion disables. When I'm so insecure and I'm always thinking about what other people are thinking of me, that's going to, that's going to cause me to not trust you. It's going to cause me, if I, if I, I need to impress you, then I'm not going to really open up because it's all about impressing you. If I'm worried about what you're thinking of me, then really that's fear, and that fear will keep me from close, you know, being close with you, having intimacy, being connected to you in a deep way. That's what, I'll write this down. Insecurity prevents intimacy. It prevents it. Because it's insecurity where we can really be ourselves. That's what we talk about in small groups. That's why we talk about about taking off the mask in a small group and in a small group where you can be yourself. And, you can, and that's why in, in our vision on the cup you'll get, it's, it starts out know God because we believe everybody should know God and what Christ did uh, for you on the cross. But then we find freedom and we find freedom through knowing people and them knowing us because God designed you to be known fully by people. Whether you ever get married or not, whether you're married or not currently, it has nothing to do with it. Soul to soul, people to know you and, 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 and to be in your life. This is an important part of what God wants for us. And so in our relationships, the reason a lot of times we don't uh, have this is because we fear exposure. We're just afraid of people really knowing who we are. It goes all the way back to the very first couple, Adam and Eve. Notice there in Genesis 3, it says, Adam says, I was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid. And so he, he hid from his nakedness. Now, now, it's interesting, you know, today, that's probably not an issue as much, right? People now are celebrating nakedness. It's all over the TV. People show me body parts I don't want to see. You know, they say, hey, look on the, my, my butt cheek. I got that cool tattoo. Look at that, you know. Uh, I don't really need to see that, but thank you. So they're not, you know, they're, they're real secure in their body, but they're very insecure in their emotional part of them. They're, they're afraid to really share who they are. And, uh, and, and, and so they, it's really this, this dichotomy here. Oh, it's, oh, I'm okay with everybody seeing my body naked, but don't you dare see. I'm too insecure to show you what I feel like emotionally unclothed. Because that, what would happen? Well, it's possible fear of rejection, right? 
for your rejection. And that's, there's probably no fear worse than that, that somebody would know who I am, I really open up, I really am transparent, I, you know, and then I'm rejected. I mean, that, that's just like the deepest wound of all. And so we're afraid of doing that. So that's, that's why we need God in here. This is kind of like this God intersection of God building a trusting community where people would not do that to you, where they would accept you as you are. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, a prof- it's a pretty powerful experience when you discover that. And that happens in a small group. Listen, if you've not been in a small group before and you join one, which I hope you do, you'll discover like the first day when everybody's getting to know each other, it does, there's nothing magic. It's, it's, it takes a while. It's a journey. And so if, 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 if the small group leader kind of, hey, how's everybody doing? You know, hey, Andy, hey, Joe, how, hey, Susie. And they go, everybody's going to go, oh, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then the second week, same thing. Yep, yep, I'm good. Oh, everything's good with me. It's not true, but, you know, we don't trust, right? Trust is something that's built. But after a, after a few weeks go by, you start realizing, hey, these people, they're legit. They're legit, and we're all struggling with stuff. Then they start opening up, and you start to realize, wow, there's some real freedom. And God designed me to be known, fully known by, by people. That leads to this last thing, um, last thing that overcomes this area of insecurity, which is love. Loving words unites relationships where we learn how to love the kind of love that God gives us to really impact other people. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to read this last verse and then we're going to close. I'm actually, we're letting you out early for a reason, okay? Uh, Our services aren't that long anyways, but we're letting you out specifically early because we want you to have time to go and talk to some small group leaders. If you're already in one, just give them a high five, you know, encourage them. If you're not, then I want you to go and talk to them. You go, Andy, you know, I don't know. I feel uncomfortable. Well, I'm giving you extra minutes that you didn't, you didn't deserve, okay? <laughs> the, these are kind of like my minutes. You're spending my minutes that I've given to you, okay? So think of it like that, right? Let's close with this last verse. All who proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them. We know how much God loves us, and we put our trust in Him. God is love. And then let's read this together. As we live in God, our love grows more and more perfect, so we will not be afraid. Circle the word grows. It's something that grows. His love grows in us more and more, eliminates that fear, develops the relationships that we need, that we need overcomes that part where we want relationships, but we're afraid of them. But we desperately long for them, but we need them. How do you bridge that gap? It's through the love of God injecting into us, growing our confidence, growing this progress. It's worth it. It's hard. It's risk-taking. I've been burned in the past. Listen, as I want to plead with you as your pastor, don't let your past uh, hurts dictate your future. You can say, hey, I've been burned. It's hurt. It's wet. I'm never going to do that again. My friend, please. Don't, don't live in a shell. Don't live. Don't build those walls up around your relationships. God is in the business of doing new things, and he'll do it in your life if you let him. It'll take some risk-taking on your end. It'll take some risk-taking, but it will be worth it. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Well, Lord, as we close, we just want to invite you here, Lord, to be part of what we're doing Come, Lord, come. Help us with our insecurities, with our selfishness, with our pride, those things that just erode relationships. Instead, God, help us to come and lay our lives down for your sake, to embrace humility and to embrace your love. If you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never put your faith in Christ, would you do that right now? Just say right where you're at. In your, own, in your own little prayer space. You might think it, you might whisper it, but you say, dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ for me. Help me to learn to receive the love that you have for me. And you say, God, forgive me for trying to do it on my own. Help me to lean into you 
more and more. And lean in, into your body more and more. Help me to learn to trust, to risk take, and to love again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.